Hi everybody, this time we are going to solve um, a linear, a nonlinear convex quadratic program subject to a block of constraints, this time 8 constraints and all the variables between 0 and 99 and we are interested not in the continuous solution, we are interested in the integer solution, so these kind of problems uh, cannot be solved using the derivatives as, as, the, as we did when the continuous is when the solution is required to be continuous. So we are going to use a different approach, the branch and bound technique that has been successfully used in, in larger scale linear programming programs, can be also used in, in nonlinear programs. I think it was Gupta and Ravindran, the first who started to use this these methods in, in linear general convex programs and basically what they do is just initiate as a starting point solving the what it is called the continuous relaxation of this problem. Uh, take notice that this uh, feasibility region over here over these eight, eight constraints has a, a grid of integer points and just to to have an idea of the of the difficulty of solving these problems over here, over, the, over this uh, feasibility region, there are 251 uh, million points to be uh, candidates to be a solution of this problem. So it's, it's, a very, it's a very difficult problem to solve. But we are going to try to solve it by the branch and bound method that is starting as an initial node solving the continuous relaxation of this problem. I have just done it here, the, the first iteration, with the typical uh, programs that we have been developing here, the progress and gradient projection, the sequential quadratic, feasible directions, any of them. The solution is continuous solution, relaxed solution is 16.388, 21.69 4x2, 4.62, 4x3, 5.29, 4x4, and almost 7, 7.0095, and the objective function 805.90. So once we we know this, what we do is uh, selecting the variable over over selecting the variable over which we are going to do the ramification. So we have five candidates, and to do that, I'm going to use a little table call it, we are going to generate two columns. The first column would be f of i, being i every 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 row, so we started top to down just for every row, and we just plug in the, uh, the floating part of this number, so the floating part of this number would be just a little bit rounded, 39, this would be 39, this would be 0 0.69, 0 0.39, 0 0.69, 0 0.63 for the third row, 0.30, and the fifth and zero. And we are going to generate another column that is 1 minus this one, 1 minus the, the floating part. So 1 minus 0 0.39 would be given as 0 0.61, 0 0.61, 0 0.31. 0.37 and 0.7 and 0. And then what we do is this is this is an approach. There are other different approaches, right? I'm gonna use this. Um, there are approaches that use the, the merit functions or, or penalties, but in this one, what we do is simply this: picking for every row the minimum, so the minimum and circling, right, with a circle. We circle this, for the second the minimum is 40, 31, for the third the minimum is 0 0.37, for the fourth is 0 0.30, and just stop. And then what we do is, for the circle ones, we select the maximum. The maximum is for this. So this is telling us that we are going to do the ramification over the variable x1, right? following just this criteria. We are doing the ramification over the variable x1. And in which way? Once we know the variable, what we have to do is ramificate just using uh, the following. We take the variable x1 and we 
are going to form, uh, this is a, like an expansion tree, we are going to form two nodes, one with the floor integer solution of this variable, of this continuous uh, relaxed variable, the floor integer is x1 less or equal than 16, and the ceiling integer, the ceiling integer of this variable is x1 greater or equal than 17. So this is what we are going to do, solving two, another two problems. That is to say, taking this problem and adding this constraint at the, at the bottom of the constraint, adding this and solving the continuous relaxation. And then removing this and for the other node, we plug in the second constraint at the end and just solve the overall problem again in continuous relaxation. So this is giving us, the solution of this node is giving us x1 being 17, x2 being 21.69, x3 being 4.03, x4 being 5.29, and x5 being um, 7.02. And the objective function, call it theta2, theta subscript 2, is 807.95. And the solution of the first relaxed continuous program, that is adding this constraint, is giving us x1 being 16, x2 being 21.69, x3 being uh, 5, x4 being 5.3, and x5 being 7. Right? So we have now two nodes over which we have to decide the same as in the previous. We are starting for this first, for example. For this first, I'm going to just uh, clear the, the problem, the initial starting problem, just to make room for the next iterations, the next uh, ramifications. Okay, so following the same rules as in this, we are going to choose over which variables we are going to um, do the ramification. So what we do is plug in the the floating part of the of the variable, every variable, so this one is 0 because 16 is just integer, uh, 0 0.69 for the second, 0, 0.3 and 0. So 1 minus this fractional, this fraction is giving us 0 again, 0 0.31, 0, 0.7 and 0. So again, going top to down, we select the minimum. The minimum of these two is 0 0.31 and the minimum of these two is 0 0.3. And over this we uh, choose the maximum of the circle one. So the, the maximum lies over 0 0.31 that it belongs to the variable x2, right? So this is telling us the new variable over we are going to do the ramification, that is x2. So this means that we have to solve two continuous relaxed problems again. This one with x2, x2 this time, being less or equal than the, its floor integer, that is 21, and x2 greater or equal than the ceiling integer, the ceiling integer is 22. So over here we, we take the initial problem and plug in this constraint and this constraint and solve the problem, the continuous problem of this. And over here we take the initial problem plus this constraint plus this constraint. Let's begin by this. This we are we are lucky, we are we are fortunate ones because this is giving us an integer solution. This is giving us x1 being 16, x2 being 22 x3 being 5, x4 being 5, and x5 being 7. And the objective function is, is an upper bound for us, it's an integer upper bound for this type of problems. The obje objective function is 807, right? And solving the, the ramification above is giving us x1, x1 being uh, 16, x2 being 21, x3 being 5.04, x4 
x4 being 5.94 and x5 being 7, right? And the objective function, this uh, theta 3, has a value of 808.6. And just look in the results, uh, what we see is that we can just, we should be doing the ramifications over this and over this, but what happens? Uh, we can cut this node because this node is dominated by an upper integer bound that is 807 because this value is greater or equal than 807 that is an, an upper bound so this means that it's not necessary uh, doing more ramifications over this because all the time we're gonna we're gonna take in values that are gonna be greater or equal than a 107 so this is acting as an upper bound so this is dominated by an upper bound but if you look at this result of here it happens quite the same because 807.95 is also greater or equal than 807 so this this node is also dominated by an integer upper bound so we can cut this node so this means that we don't have any more nodes over to continue the ramification so we have uh, finished the problem so we can now assure that the integer all integer solution of the initial problem is this one x1 being 16 x2 being 22 x3 being 5 x4 being 5 and x5 being 7 and the objective value 807 and with this we can finish this approach i hope you have enjoyed the video as always bye bye